Hello and welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is Run It Back, and my name is Remko Rinkema, and you are joining me today to watch some high stakes poker. That's what it's all about, and I am flying solo today, but that should not make the fun any less. Please make sure to let me know where you're watching from. You know, what are you drinking? What are you eating? How, are you having snacks? Uh, because I definitely will have uh, plenty of snacks, plenty of drinks, and uh, because it's a solo show, we got a lot of time to watch high stakes poker, and as some of you love complaining about is that I talk too much um, won't really be an issue today I feel as though we're gonna watch plenty of the action and uh, dive deep into what's going on here on season 7 of High Stakes Poker uh, it's gonna be a lineup that you're very, very familiar with you're seeing some of the faces right now we got Dola Brunson we got Johnny Chan showing up we got Vanessa Selps in action Antonio Esfandiari Barry Greenstein so basically sort of a whole sort of collection of your favorites um, and what I want to know from you this week, because we're doing this show together, it's you and me doing the show, doing Run It Back. Let me know what you want to know. What do you want to talk about? Do you want some hot takes? Do you want to hear my take on Norm McDonald's haircut, which looks tremendous, tremendous, just perfect haircut for Norm McDonald here. Um, Kenneth, shout out to you watching on Facebook. Uh, thanks for being with me here on the show. We got Nashville in the house on YouTube. Brian, thanks so much for joining me. Benjamin from Chicago, love having you guys here. Um, as it is a tradition on this show, I'm going to have a drink. Uh, I did not have one last week with Maria Ho. Uh, I owe her a shot of whatever kind she wants. And once Marie is back on the show, I will take that shot. Um, I did a little bit of a um, long bike ride last week that I wanted to not drink for for quite some time. Um, but now that we've got that all done and dealt with, it's uh, time to just, you know, enjoy beverage and watch some poker. This is the uh, Weissbier that I managed to obtain. It's a German style Hefeweizen, which is one of my favorites. Um, and we're jumping right into the action. Ace 10. Let's, um, let's have a look and see if this goes anywhere. Very, very steady pour over here. Check. Wow. We got some action right away here. Viffer making a straight on the turn against the top pair of Bill Klein. We all know Viffer is super aggressive, so I think we're safe to assume that he could be betting with any sort of hand in this situation. So let's see if he can make some money off Bill Klein. Get him, Bill. Wow, it's getting big. All right, guys, I need your help with this one. Did Viffer make a mistake? Was it, you know, not smart to keep raising it on the turn or maybe leading in the river even? I don't, I don't really sure, I'm not really sure what to do there. Uh, my instincts are saying just raise again on the turn. If Bill Klein does have a strong hand, you want to you wanna make him pay there to see the river card. Um, I'm not going to pretend that I'm an expert, but I'd love to hear from you guys. I think the joke chat pros is made a lot on Twitch, but I'm relying on you guys today. So please do chime in. Could Viffer have made any more money? in that hand. Uh, Melvin, thanks for joining me here on Facebook. Uh, Kenneth, cheers. Red wine. I love red wine. Today I'm sticking with beer though. And I must say, one of my favorites, you can get it at any grocery store in the US probably. Um, let's have a look. David, thanks so much for being with us. Amir, thank you as well. Amir, this is so bad. What's so bad about it? This is great action. This is awesome. Uh, if you want to watch all seven seasons of High Stakes Poker without me to talk to you or talk you through it, Please go to PokeGo right now, watch all seven seasons of action, and you know, sit back, relax, enjoy the show. We are doing these shows, by the way, because we are bringing back High Stakes Poker. Season 8 is coming. We are working on it. We are trying to get the lineups together and everything figured out, of course, with the corona crisis. And once that's all in place, 
you guys are going to be really, really excited to watch season eight of High Stakes Poker. And until then, I'm going to do run it back shows. We're going to just relive some of these old moments. And today it's time for season seven. And we got Andrew Robel uh, playing a pot against Viffer. So just going to enjoy the action, guys. Pulled it on the flop. Huh. I really thought Viver would call there with the king, but of course, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, Ushi is saying, can we get Viffer back for the new high stakes poker? I'd love to have Viffer back. I'm not sure if he still plays high stakes, but if he does, I'm sure Brent Hanks will get in touch with him to see if he's available. I love watching Viffer play, especially on Poker After Dark. He really made some waves over the years. Um... Amir, if you're being so negative, you know, you don't have to watch. We don't, we don't need you here. We're creating, creating some positivity, some positive energy here in this chat. Um, Elazar is saying, Pichu have bet the river. That's what I think, too. I, I think there's definitely a way to get paid more. Um, Nathan, one of our top fans on Facebook, is saying, was this before the Magician's big one-drop win? Yes, it was, because this was taped in 2011. Esfandiari won the big one for one-drop in 2012. So... One year before that. So Antonio Esfandiari already had some big money before winning the big one for one drop. Is mine? Yeah. How many people on the pot? Five. Five. Definitely a good argument for raising there. Lots of respect, huh? Club, club, give me a club. Club on the river, please. Let's do it. Told you. Check. How much should Vanessa bet here, guys? Let me know. Great hand. Really interesting. I mean, this this seems pretty standard. Antonio's trying to get value there. I I think Antonio should have raised the the turn. Maybe uh, I, I'm not I'm not entirely sure if that's the right play. But to me, it feels more natural to raise the turn there. 
And on the river, raising for value seems totally normal. But of course, then when you get three bet, even by Vanessa, who's known to be very aggressive, that becomes a very, very tough spot. Um, oh, chat's going wild. I love it, you guys. Aaron in the house. Um, Morgan in the house. Morgan saying, this makes me wish poker was back opening casinos. Well, today, poker is already opening again while Johnny Chan walks in. Let's listen in if there's any good banter. The magic man. Is that true? The magic man stuck to the chair and doesn't ever want to leave the way things are going. Well, let's go there. Let's there go. Go. <laughs> Some lunch here. <laughs> wow, look at that. The good the good old the good old Bellagio plastic bag from the little convenience store. It's it's one of my favorite things. I think Negrano in season one showed up with like a CVS bag. Uh, full of a million dollars just crazy to think about those numbers uh, but anyway morgan saying this makes me wish poker was back opening casinos poker is already opening back up in certain casinos i'm not gonna play i, I think the orleans right now in vegas where i am has a waiting list of about 50 players and i'm just, i'm sorry i'm just not gonna mix it up there right away it's sort of at your own risk but uh i think poker's coming back pretty quickly in most places um let's see what else we have going on here um Kenneth misses it as well. Um, Mitchell is wondering if Jeff Platter Hanks are giving tours yet. Uh, they will be very, very shortly. They'll have a little flag and they'll just like walk you through the whole property. So uh, we'll, we'll make sure to get that set up once, uh, once that's possible again. Uh, Julian is asking, do you know what the full lineup is for season eight? I do not know, but I have seen the short list and it, and it is not a short list. And I can already tell you that it's going to be a great mix of new school players and old school players. So you're going to see some of your favorites that have already played on high stakes poker. And you're going to see some new faces that have never played before. And that's why I think the return of high stakes poker is just going to be incredible. You know, it's going to have the whole blend of things that you love about this show. And I think it's going to be one of the craziest games that you'll ever you'll ever have seen. So uh, Clocks is saying you have to get Aussie Matt. Ozzy Matt, definitely on the list, definitely on the short list. Would love to have Ozzy Matt on high stakes poker. He is so much action. It's just incredible to watch him play. Um, let's see. Uh, Timmy is saying, love running back. Any chance getting Dan Legrano or Helmuth on? Actually, I had both of those guys on. The Helmuth episode is available on Poker Go. You can watch it right now. We watched the 1989 World Series of Poker main event, which Helmut managed to win, which was his big breakthrough. He became the youngest winner of the main, main event ever. That record stood until... Quiz question. Answer it right now. 2008, when Peter Eastgate won the main event. So that record was his for a very, very long time. And the episode with Daniel Negreanu has uh, part of it available on a YouTube channel. And then the other part is available on Poker Go as well. And I'm going to have Daniel back on the show soon. So if you guys have suggestions for what I should watch with Daniel, um, I'm definitely going to be uh, picking a good episode to watch with him. So definitely going to have those guys back on the show in the future. Uh, Julian wondering, uh, do you think Victor Blom will make an appearance? Well, it's up to Victor Blom, basically. I mean, he's one of those guys that, you know, we'd love to have. Um, you never really quite know. He's been putting on some amazing performances uh, on Party Poker recently. We had the Super High Roller Bowl online series, and Victor Blom was basically in the lead in the, in the series for the entire time until the final day when Russian pro Ardor Martirosian um, eclipsed him on the leaderboard. So Victor Blom definitely doing well lately. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to pass it along that Victor Blom is one of the fan favorites to, uh, to appear on, uh, on High Stakes Poker. Maybe he's a professional gambler. Who knows? <laughs> All right. Sorry, Brian. I, I just can't lost your college fund to a billionaire. I hope you don't. Bluff, bluff, bluff. I finally had a pair. He was gone anyway. I actually finally had a pair also. I could I had beat a pair. pair. I could beat a pair. I had the toppest pair. Top pair? Top pair. I did too. Holy crap. Then you couldn't <laughs> have had top pair. I did not have top pair. Yeah. Action is on. Strudel. Straddle. 
All right, let me let me ask you guys this question. Do you like it when there's a straddle in your game? If you play 1-2, you know, it could be 1-2-4. If it's if you play 5-10, it could be 5-10-20. Do you like the straddle? Are you one of those people that loves to put the straddle on? Or would you prefer to keep it a little bit smaller as far as the game goes? Because we all know that the straddle entices some gambling or at least a lot more multi-way action. So let me know, let me know in the chat if you uh, if you are a straddle, straddle person. The price is right. Run it. Forty two hundred. This could get expensive. <laughs> oh, Johnny. Here's Johnny. Hmm. Is he going to Is he going to fold this? Wow. Wow. <laughs> It's back. not, here's Johnny, it's, here's seat six. <laughs> there you go. Okay, guys. That was a very, very impressive fold by Antonio Esfandiari. This must mean that he knows that Johnny Chan is extremely tight because when I have trip aces, I don't care who you are. I'm calling. I'm just, my money's in there right away. So that was an extremely, extremely tough fold by Antonio Svendiar and he made it pretty quickly too. So very, very impressed there. Um, it seems like we've reached consensus here in the chat. It's all about the straddle game. Everybody loves it. Walter loves it. Everybody is saying it's good for the game. Dale Ascends depends on the texture and the action. Um, Kenneth loves that it builds a good pot. Hi, Chelsea. Thanks for joining us. Love having you here as always. Um, we got a little interview segment that I'll talk through because, you know, this is, of course, a throwback from way in the day watching season seven of High Stakes Poker, which was taped in 2011, just before Black Friday. This was the last season ever broadcasted. And then now we, Poker Go, is bringing back High Stakes Poker for season eight when quarantine is over and we can go and film and bring all these people together. We're going to have a beautiful mix of old school and new school players back at the Poker Go studio taping High Stakes Poker. So get ready for that. If you have suggestions about the lineup, please let us know in the chat. We are watching, we are taking notes, and we are definitely taking your, um, your suggestions into consideration. I see Garrett Edelstein being mentioned as well. Garrett is an awesome player. Love to have him as well. Uh, Patrick Antonio is one of my favorites, who's actually going to be on this show. Uh, I'm not sure when yet, but Patrick told me he wants to be on the show. He, he wants to watch some old school action of himself. So that should be should be a blast to watch. Um, we got Brunson here with the race to 5100 after a straddle, and then Selps with a king. So this hand could get big. So let's uh, let's listen in. 14. This is huge. This is huge.
Don't think we'll see Vanessa check again here, will we? She's probably thinking, I'm, I'm not going to get three streets of value, so I'll try to get two streets of value. Uh, but there is some draws out there, so this should definitely be on the larger side if if it's up to me, at least. 17-4. Well, I guess you turn three kings, but I'm going. All in. Does that speech mean you have trip jacks? I, I call. <laughs> Oh. No, that don't mean I've got three. Oh, okay, eight. I have Ace King. Okay, I got two eights. It's up to you, I don't care. <laughs> don't deal yet, there. there's some. Uh, you can do twice if you want. Do it twice. Vanessa is just being nice to Doyle here. Doyle just knows that he's a legend yeah, yeah, yeah. and that she'll feel bad running it once. I don't think Vanessa really wants to run it once, at least from the look of on her face. She's just doing him a favor. Good guys. Two for the good guys. <laughs> a legend down. You kind of want to feel bad for Doyle, but you also know that he's an absolute crusher and a legend, and he's one for like seven straight decades just absolutely destroying everyone he comes across so we should never feel bad for doyle but still vanessa looks as though she feels bad taking money from him which is kind of funny um after this hand by the way let's look at these standings vanessa still down eighty five thousand dollars after busting doyle doyle apparently rebought here for 200k um as fendiar is sitting on the biggest stack with over six hundred thousand. Let me keep an eye on the chat as well to see what is happening here. Uh, shout outs to everyone who is participating today in the show. I'm running solo, so I need you guys more than ever. If you have questions, remarks, or just you want a shout out, please let me know. Um, Derek and multiple people actually wanting Doyle to come back for season eight. Doyle still plays poker, obviously not right now because we are dealing with the corona crisis in Vegas as well. Uh, but I do think that once everything is safe again, Doyle will be playing again. And by the way, he picks up pocket jack, so let's listen in. You're gonna get it. I don't particularly want it. Do I picks up a small one? Let's go back to the chat here. Uh, Dale is wondering, do we have new dates yet for the new season? We do not. We have no, we don't have the new dates yet because it's all dependent on regulations, whether it's safe, whether the players want to travel. So it's it's up to a lot of factors. But once it's set in stone, we'll be sure to let you know. And until then, you know, just enjoy uh, the old episodes of High Stakes Poker to, you know, relive those moments um, once more. Um, David on YouTube is asking, who is the commentary team out of interest? Well, maybe you'll hear some familiar voices on High Stakes Poker, and I'm not sure what that means, but fill it in yourself. But um, I, can, I can also imagine that being a blend of old and new, um, maybe a variation of commentators. Who knows? Um, I have heard that there's been talks of uh, a certain legendary voice being back in action as far as high stakes poker goes. Alex Turley, where is Alex Turley? What's he doing? I hear he's he doing part of Tango lessons and bonus series or something. Of of <laughs> Kid just has like a box of the tank of money. <laughs> Obviously. That's all. Hmm. 
15,000. Really not, not much Vanessa can beat here. Um, MS saying thoughts on flatting 10 here on the turn. I'm, it's Or sorry, on the flop. It's tough because what are you going to get value from? It's one of those situations, I think, where you're either way ahead or way behind. Um, sets, two pair combos. And then Selps' 10s are pretty vulnerable, even against overcards. So interesting. She calls. Wow. Yeah. John Chan with the goods there on the river. Uh, Cole saying we need Phil Locke in season eight. Phil Locke is one of my all-time favorites on the show. Um, Clocks is saying uh, he likes Solomon, Rick Solomon. Um, Rick Solomon, of course, tremendous character. He, when I saw him at the Pokego studio when he was there for Rob's home game, one of the most eclectic jumpsuits I have ever seen. It had basketballs on it all the way. It was white with basketballs on it. So he's just a one-of-a-kind personality that when you're around him, you feel as though you're in the, in the presence of someone who is just, I don't know, on a different planet. It's really hard to describe. But I think Rick Solomon fits perfectly into the high-stakes poker lineup uh, in whatever way they construct it. Clocks is saying, Remco, for once and for all, is Ivy having a hard time? Well, I don't have his phone number, so I can't really confirm. Uh, Ivy is an enigma, so you never really know how he's doing. Um, the rumors about Ivy are always swirling. And sometimes those rumors are positive and sometimes those rumors are negative. But I have no real information from any kind of source. So what I'm basing it on is, you know, poker table conversations. And, you know, I speak to some pros every now and then. And I have literally no idea how Ivy is doing. But I would not be surprised if all of a sudden he shows up again for big games. And, you know, it's Phil, I it's Phil Ivy. I mean, he'll always be in action, obviously. Um, let's see what else we got here. Let me turn this up a little bit. your hand better than four high this time? I take the fifth. Uh, Irvin is saying maybe guys like Paul Pierce would love to have Paul Pierce on the show. When Paul Pierce was in the studio to play on Poker After Dark, he was a blast. We had him on the podcast. We talked about hoops, but we also talked about poker. He's a huge poker fan. Uh, he plays with a lot of the other basketball players that love to play poker as well. Um, back when he was on the Celtics, he said he played a lot on the airplane. Uh, Jason Terry is a big-time poker player. Um, he said he's played with Russell Westbrook, who's also a big-time player. So uh, poker is very popular in the NBA, and I would not be surprised to see more of those guys on the show. I mean, we could have somebody look at your cards and play. Let me know where you guys are watching from, by the way, and what are you drinking? I'm having a, a Hefeweizen German beer. That's sort of my style tonight. I was thinking between wine and beer, and I landed on beer, and I think I made the right choice. Um, Thursday night, got to let loose a little bit. Still got to make dinner after this, so it's always good to start with a little bit of beer. Um, Mike Chan is saying, Rob's home game first day was one of the best games in a long time. Yes, Mike, I agree with you. If you have not watched any of that action, go to Poker Go and watch Rob's home game. It was... It was a special event. It was last year. I believe it was in November. I was on set for it. It was, it was the most ridiculous action you'll, you've ever seen. Uh, Rick Salmon was in the mix. Um, plenty of your favorite characters, including Jean-Robert Blonde and Rob Young himself, obviously. And it was just one of those games where the stakes were getting higher almost every orbit. And it had that really high-stakes poker feel to it. So maybe some of those guys are also on the list. Because I thought I was going to win. <laughs> Yeah, you, know, you win some or lose some. Last time we ran it once, I won it. Yeah, this was a little bigger. Yeah, well, I've been. Worked out better for me. Last time I had to drop it. Very, but if you wouldn't have hit it, you wouldn't have to look at the game. Anymore. Yeah, it would have been quiet on this side. <laughs> oh, it would have been real quiet today. <laughs> Because you overall, you actually, you've been pretty unlucky on the show. Bill Klein takes another pod. We got Texas in the house. 
Thank you, Texas, for joining me. Um, Chris Mays and Elazar Valdez watching from Texas. Always good to have Texas in the house. I've been to Austin twice. Awesome, awesome city. One of my favorite cities in the U.S. I went to San Antonio for a day trip. Had a good time there. Not the same vibe as Austin, but still had a good time. The Riverwalk was way too crowded for my taste. Um, did go to a cool cocktail bar, though, just off the Riverwalk, which was a good time as well. Uh, but it was in the middle of the day, and uh, we were the only ones there, so... It, it was a little bit different than your average bar crowd. Um, Nathan washing from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Drinking beer, Molson Canadian. Well, staying with the local Canadian flavor. I appreciate it, Nathan. Cheers to you, my man. By the way, cheers. Let's have a sip, guys. Let's have a good time. Let's enjoy ourselves. That's my claim to fame. 170,000 loader and land of 10 dues. <laughs> Doyle Brunson with the 10 dues. Obviously, got to give that hand a shout out. Let's see. Um... David Pym asking, who doesn't play high stakes poker anymore from the old school pros season one to seven? Man, that's tough. Barry definitely haven't seen Barry in a very long time. Um, I'd have to look at the lineup list, honestly. I mean, I have the lineup list here from, from the last couple of years. But um, if you go back in time and watch the old high stakes poker episodes, you'll find out pretty quickly the players who are no longer playing. But for the most part, the, the core of the players, Doyle, Antonio, Daniel, uh, they all still play. Um, not sure about Sammy Farha. Haven't seen him in a very long time. He's obviously part of some of the most iconic moments of high stakes poker. And um, love to have Sammy back one day. Um, just not sure where he is, what his status is. Um, Rista Kings, Australia. Drinking water while watching at work. Shout out to you for watching at work. I appreciate that. That is, that is how I would do it as well. I would also watch this at work if I was at work. But I'm actually working right now. So I have the best job in the world. Um, Andy B, watching from Iowa, he says, need Viffer back. Yes, would love to have Viffer back. Maybe send him a tweet and be like, hey, Viffer, coming back on High Stakes Poker. Um, we have uh, Nasser Nasser on the Facebook chat. We have Bob from California. We have Randy from New Orleans, Louisiana. And Alberto asking, what happened to Chris Moneymaker? Is he still playing? He definitely is. Chris is one of my favorite people in poker, one of the nicest guys, and... Quite likely have him, having him on this show next week to watch some old World Series of Poker action. So that'd be that'd be a, that'd be a good time to watch some um, some 2003 WSOP. We got some big action here, guys. Let's listen. Wow, Johnny Chan is standing up for this one. What does that mean? He's not even in the hand. Pro Wars. I love Pro Wars, bro. You know? The it's, young versus it's, the old. It's yummy. It's just <laughs> so much <laughs> talent. It's so, so much beauty. So At least we know that whoever wins this hand has got to get creative unless the turn brings something big. But I always love seeing these hands where there's a lot of money in the pot before the flop and then everybody misses just to see how creative these players can get to steal the pot. Can you hear his heartbeat? <laughs> Our check. I have a ten. Ten's the nuts. Always a nine. Yo, this would have probably about that, you know. 50,000. Viffer takes it. Bill, what are you even thinking about? You know. He was afraid of a... Uh, Derek is saying, thank you for doing these. Watch the last few weeks. Well, thank you, Derek. If you weren't watching and all you guys were not watching, we would not, we would not be doing this show. So thank you so much for being here. And some large beers are being brought in. Or maybe that's some tea with some foam on it. But it looked like some beers were brought into the set here. Uh, John Paris, watching from Greece. Thank you so much for joining me. Derek, by the way, watching from PA, 
I'm going to assume that's Pennsylvania. I can't, can't think of a country with uh, PA on it. Uh, Brian St. Onge, watching from Chiang Mai, Thailand. Love Thailand. Been to Bangkok once. Had a great time there. Can't talk about it on the stream, though, but I had a great time. Um, Edgar, watching from Belize. Oh, wow. I've never been to Belize, but that sounds like an amazing time. I hope you're watching with your, your feet up, with a little bit of you know sun going down over the, over the water there. Or actually, Belize is on the other side, so probably only have the sunrise coming out of the water. Uh, Chelsea saying, had a wonderful time in Hollywood, Florida for the moneymaker road to PSPC. Pretty sure it's been postponed. I think it is. I think everyone, everything's postponed right now. I would just keep an eye on Chris Moneymaker's uh, Twitter handle and uh, see whenever that event's coming back. Um, let's have a look at YouTube. Wow, so much action in the chat. Wow, there's, there's some interesting stuff going on in the chat. Uh, MS is saying Jamie Gold with some cry laugh emojis. Jamie Gold, one one of the most entertaining players of all time to watch. Let me know, by the way, in the chat. I want to know this from you guys. What's the most interesting WSOP main event final table you have ever watched? And recently, I've been diving into this, so I have a lot of hot takes on this. Let me know which main event final table was the best. And of course, you can go back as far as you want or as recent as you want. There's a lot of options here. Let me know which main event final table was your favorite. Um, Diego playing online and watching from Toronto. Cheers, man. I love Toronto. Lived there for a few years. Big, big fan of various establishments in the city. Um, Super Point Pizza on Queen Street, one of my favorite places. And then you get some ice cream at Bang Bang. Definitely go to. If you've never been there, uh, Diego, make sure to do so. Um, let's see. Joel is asking, will Durr be on the show? Well, I'd love to have Durr on the show. Um, he doesn't text back quite frequently, but I'm sure Brent Hanks has more leverage than I do. So hopefully we'll have Durr in the house for high stakes poker. And I'm pretty sure he is very high on the list as far as players to have on high stakes poker. We got Igor watching from Slovakia. We have Arthur watching from Lithuania. We have Yen Yen from Philippines. We have uh, a lot of Moneymaker fans, which I appreciate. That's awesome. I love Chris. Um, we have Joel watching from Montreal. And who was this who asked that? Justin is asking, is this an old rerun? Yes, it is. It is season seven of High Stakes Poker. We have quads, by the way, against pocket aces. I almost missed that hand. What? Laugh it up. I know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It makes it a little funnier, right? Bullets? Bullets? Yeah. This is <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Come on, Rubble. Show. Come on, Rubble. Wow. Be I'm glad I didn't get silly with the button. Uh. There. <laughs> Rubble is like a cool guy and he's very aggressive and he plays very well. I wish he would lighten up a little bit. I wish he would just like play that game the way Antonio tries to entertain sometimes, I think it really helps the mood in a game like high stakes poker. What else we got going on? Oh, Justin, by the way, Vancouver Island. That sounds incredible. I'd love to go to Vancouver Island. Never been. Andy is wondering, any chance of high stakes PLO? Been intrigued by Mr. Falcons. I mean, never say never. I mean, I think high stakes poker is predominantly a no limit hold'em game, but I love PLO myself as well. So maybe... We'll see some high stakes PLO action if there's en enough people that want to play that. Um, Ace King for Svendiari. Let's see if he gets any action on this. Got a low flop there. Let's see what is happening in the chat. Frank P is asking, is this live? I'm live. The guys playing right next to me are not live. They are uh, season seven of High Stakes Poker. And I am just here to take your questions and to get you excited for season eight of High Stakes Poker, which is coming to Poker Go. We are working on it. We are putting the lineups together. We are trying to get all the right names and I've seen a lot of those names in the chat already today that we'd love to have on the show. Um, Irvin is now saying Garrett and Berkey. Those guys are new school and those guys would be awesome to have on the show. Ace on the turn there for Antonio against the nines of Brunson. Wow. Big raise.
I wonder what Doyle does here. Hmm. All right, guys, let me know in the chat. Would you call with with the Ace King here? Big, big decision. You flopped the Nutter Butters, huh? Looks like a fold to me the way he's hand. He's, All right. There it is. There it is. One of the four corners now. Wow. Doyle does it with the big bluff against Antonio. I think he's giving Doyle credit because Doyle has not been very aggressive, hasn't showed down any crazy bluffs. So that's clearly, clearly helping. Oh, is that a beer? Guys, is that a beer? Can we can we get a confirmation on that? It could it could be one of those um sparkling teas, but this might be a beer. I'm having one. I'm not sure what you guys are well, drinking. You don't have to wait for the TV. You had me. <laughs> Look who we have here. Bill Perkins. All right, new lineup, guys. We are continuing to watch High Stakes Poker. We have Mike Baxter, Jason Mercer, Jonathan Duhamel. We have Bill Perkins joining us. Herolibus Vulgaris. New lineup. Who's your favorite? Let me know. Uh, Tom Roper saying... Hey, Ramco, I just wanted to say uh, thanks for these watch-alongs. been enjoying them greatly from Australia. Tom, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And you guys, I haven't even said it this whole broadcast yet. Don't forget to like this video. It helps me. It helps our channel. It helps people find us. Liking this video is very, very important for me. So please do that. And, you know, maybe I'll crack open two more beers and we'll just keep watching. But don't forget to like this video. I really, really appreciate it. Maybe it's the chair. You come beat up on me. Uh, it was him I was going after, not you, so don't. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Might have been a little bit of both. Perkins looks like he doesn't want to give up that easily. Is it time to play the goof off money? Frank P is saying, give me the Asian boys. I think what you mean is uh, some, some um, Richard Young action and maybe some Paul Fua. It'd be awesome to have those guys. They have... As it seems, unlimited bankrolls. So the action could get really big if we got them in the mix. Uh, Joel is saying, how about Trick, Tony G, and Jungle? That would be incredible, having those guys in the lineup. I would love that. Um, Alexander watching from Italy. Thank you so much for inventing pizza and pasta. I love Italy. Uh, Ciao, Eduardo watching from Brazil. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we have Singapore in the house. Let's see what else is happening here in the chat. Chat's going wild. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any more questions or remarks or anything else going on, you got to let me know. And I asked this earlier, what's your favorite WSOP main event final table? I'm just going to say that mine is probably 2006 because the way Jamie Gold straight up terrorized that table is just something that we've never really seen before. And he just bluffed and he had it and he bluffed and he had it. And then that big, big hand where he could have ended the tournament in a three-way all-in. Just so many amazing moments. Let's see. What else we got here? Um, shout out from Chicago. Alan, thank you so much for joining us. Heralibus, I know. Gets me excited as well. Pocket Kings. Is Heralibus Pocket right, Kings right. Vulgaris. From the olden days of yeah, uh, high-stakes nice poker. He plays big cash seven, games. Goes by the name of Bob, which is good because I eight. don't have to say Heralibus anymore. Put three bets in. He, he's folded some of the most un unbelievable... On three, the first three cards? Yeah. After only three cards wrong, he started with three of a kind. Three sevens, rolled up sevens. So Bob slow plays his kings, yeah. and we have three-way action to the flop. It's better for him to just let him think he's right. Wow. I don't even play stud, but I can feel the tro <laughs> atrocious. Well, he also folded an eight or better with... So Bill Perkins. How much does Bill Perkins like, like, fo like folding a jack, or is this pot going to get enormous? That is the big question right now, because for all of us, slow played his kings, so let's see how much money he can make. That is 5,500. Wow. What is Smooth Calling Bob going to do? The king of five bets. Right, okay. 
because the king was just like, he knew it was going to get fired. It was like spite five bet, right, capping right, it, you know? Right. Oh, the, the spite pre five bet. Oh, okay, well, that was pretty scary. That's yeah, I know, yeah, but Kuka was stuck, like 40k or something. That changes it. Yeah. And he also plays on And he folded, and Kuka just had a pair of kings. And he doesn't play his own money anymore. I don't like this. It's like, oh, yeah. Perkins fires a second oh, barrel. Sure huh. Yeah. This pot is very no interesting. Oral was playing it very slow, very coy. Bob calls. Hmm. I think this game is too big. Can we make it smaller? <laughs> Phil's heart is like pumping. <laughs> I'm not, not, in not in the it's hand. Phil. He's like, Phil, you're not gonna Phil Locke is in the action. I think someone in chat earlier said that they love Phil Locke, so there you have it. These guys can afford it. They can. They're, they're wealthy. Perkins keeping his foot on the gas. Hmm. You got me. I mean, I have a pretty good hand. It's not like that. You got me. Kings, kings do it. Very interesting hand. No raises, no, no, or no re-raises, I should say. And Haralabuz wins a nice little hand here at the start of this lineup. Uh, Joel said, 2010, when hometown hero Jonathan Duhamel took it down. I mean, the Duhamel hand against Matt Affleck is probably one of my all-time favorite and most painful hands in the game of poker ever which happened right before the final table when Duhamel knocked out Matt Affleck, who then tossed a water bottle through the hallway inside the Rio and walked away crying, which is insane. Frank P is saying, is it true that all of us made a fortune just betting the Lake Show in the early 2000s, or does he legit have a system? Well, I'm not sure if he has a system, but I do know that he is widely regarded as one of the best sports bettors of all time. If you Google Horalibus Vulgaris sports betting, You'll find some interesting articles. I believe one of them is on ESPN about his sports betting prowess. And I think the series that he won a lot of money on was the Warriors against the Mavericks in the early 2000s where he bet one side the whole way through and that side was, I guess, the underdog. I can't remember exactly what the details are, but I do know that um, Haralib is, is one of the most successful sports bettors of all time. And right now he works for the Dallas Mavericks. So he made his way into uh, working for a team instead of being a professional sports better. Shout out to John Prater watching from Queensland, Australia. A lot of people from all over the world. We have K K5S watching from Lebanon. I love this, guys. You guys are all over the place. It's amazing. I'm in Vegas right now, and it's, uh, it's good to have you all with me here today. Mark uh, Abraham watching from Sydney, Australia. Sharble watching from UAE. Uh, Brendan says Nashi. Does that mean Nashville? I, I'm just going to assume that it is. Brian Pulver is here from Buffalo. We got Kieran watching from Australia. I feel as though this is like the Australian sweet spot. This is like breakfast television watching high stakes poker with me having a beer and you guys probably sipping on some coffee over there on the other side of the Pacific. Uh, Chelsea says Perkins is easy to read, talks too much. I mean, I think I can agree with you there, but when someone's betting crazy amounts of money, the pressure is definitely high if you're staring someone down who you know for a fact does not care about the money. And that's why playing against these guys is just so, so tough. Uh, Brian watching from Toronto. Thank you so much for joining me, Brian. Luis from Tijuana. This is incredible. This is the most international show we've ever had. And don't forget to like this video, by the way. Share with your friends. Tell everyone. Tell your mom, your grandma, whoever wants to watch High Stakes Poker. This is the place to be. And for the people who are just tuning in, we are bringing back High Stakes Poker. I can't say it enough. I know you guys, most of you guys have been with me here since the start of the show, uh, but I just want to reiterate that once more. High Stakes Poker is coming back. Season eight is coming to Poker Go. We are working on it right now, and we are very, very hopeful that we're going to have an incredible lineup that will uh, please everyone because obviously, you know, we have good access to some of these players. You can stand what, what, up on uh, his back to the Jack Russell for, Terrier. Uh-huh. Oh, those, those, those are smart dogs. Reach for balls. The biggest con artist in the world. Like, mm -hmm. unbelievable. Right? 2,500 I had a guy yesterday out. So at the high rise, I take him out and walk him every time, right? And this guy's got these two huge Mastiffs, and he's like... And so I see the two Mastiffs, and I see my little dog who wants to pick a fight with the Mastiff. So he doesn't usually do anything when I'm around. So I'm like, all right, I walk him to the side of the street. And the guy's like, Perkins hey, what's with up? the same I'm hand like, that just got him so in trouble. He doesn't look like he's not friendly. Bring him over here. I was like... He's not that friendly. <laughs> this guy brings his two dogs Ooh, over my dog. Hey. <laughs> Whoa, damn boy. 
Your dogs or his dogs are doing? No, his dogs were friendly. My dogs uh, were. Yeah, well, Mastiff can get away with Where's being that? friendly, right? Yeah. They've tried everything. Bergen's checks is Jacks this time. Their dog seems good, but he just doesn't like it. You know? They didn't like him Prozac or doggy Prozac they, or something. Yeah, I don't do any of that stuff. Seven. He does a lot of exercise and he's all right. He doesn't have a lot of exercise. And Baxter bets his. He's social with other dogs, so mm -hmm. I try to walk him all the time. <coughs> Pearl Above has a one of those dog running tracks in his house, and he'll dog treadmill. Dog but I don't treadmill. have it at my place. I don't have that. Oh, you don't have it? What'd you do? Cool. It's in storage. Cool. Almost all my stuff's in storage. Oh. Julian's call is gonna smell like a five. Brian is wondering, is Vegas uh, opening poker back? Um, they are, actually. The Orleans right now has a waiting list of about 50 people, which I am truly mind-blown by that people are willing to take even a small risk to play poker right now. But obviously, people love the game just way too much, and they are just playing all over town right now. Um, Paul is saying, not in Kansas City. Well, yeah, I think many places haven't opened poker just yet, and I think it's fine to wait a little bit. Um, my YouTube chat froze a little bit. Okay, we're back on. We're back. The YouTube chat is back. I missed you guys for a second there. Um, but yeah, I think poker is coming back slowly all across the country and the world. I'm assuming. I'm not sure what the rules are like in other countries. Um, what I do want to say, because we have so many Australians here, Crown in Melbourne is one of my favorite casinos in the world, and I love going to the South Melbourne market. Um, there's this place called I think it's called Espresso that I really liked, um, and Saint Ali also in Melbourne, very, very good place for breakfast. And they know how to do their coffee in Australia. Coffee there is just, it's just one of the best things in Australia. Maybe we got some gods. Heads up to the top. A Jack each here for Baxter and Perkins. Is it Michael? Oh, I'm sorry. This is going to be a chop a lot of the times, but Perkins still has more than 50% to win. 000. Well, Baxter's call on the flop has not slowed Perkins down. Huh. I don't know what you had. Baxter knows he's beat. Big fold. So big, big fold. Much bigger hand. All right. Uh, Paul C. says, please bring back Gabe Kaplan. Well... Let me tell you something. We're definitely talking to Gabe, so that's that's something that I'm also really hoping for. Gabe would be awesome to have on High Stakes Poker. Andres watching from Leon in Mexico. I think I watched the Leon uh, football team play against uh, Toronto FC back in the day, or maybe no, sorry, it was against LAFC. I watched Club Leon play against LAFC um, in Los Angeles. That was uh, definitely a good time. I really miss sports. You guys missing sports? Live sports? Really missing that. Um, hopefully it comes back soon when it's all safe. Uh, Frank P asking, who's the Mov Movesian guy? Um, I don't know, honestly, I must say. It's the only player at the table that I don't know. I'm assuming he's a, a businessman and a friend of, uh, of the guys at the table. But uh, yeah, I've never seen him uh, play before, uh, not since at least. And um, yeah, definitely one of those characters that everybody else probably loves having in the game because he's probably creating some uh, some great, great action out there. Um, Joel is saying, stay, stay safe out there, people. Yes, I want to echo that sentiment. Please stay safe. If you are going out there to gamble, if you're going out there to play poker, please be safe. Practice social distancing. You know, wear the, wear the mask. You know, it doesn't hurt anyone to wear a mask and just be, um, to be safe there. Um, let's see. Max Pell says, please watch one with Nick Shulman. Actually, speaking of the devil, Nick Shulman is someone I actually contacted to watch this with. So good call there, Max. I uh, definitely want to watch this with Nick Shulman and get some of his takes on this. Tom Roper saying, St. Ali, best coffee in Melbourne. Well, shout out to myself for remembering that. It's been quite a few years since I've last been there. Run around and nothing fun. I said no. I said good. <laughs> What's that? Just today. Yeah, they didn't like me that much. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you got it. And then, and then, and then, oh, because of the World Series. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, but then you go to the World Series. Movasian flops a pair of aces. Movasian. Now I know how to say it. Well, it used to be the best cash games. I mean, now it's dried up a little bit, but. It's got a lot. Yeah, and uh, bets 8,500. You guys right. still play mixed games are good. but No, but I'm saying even that. I mean, I didn't play. I played like one or two times this yeah. year. Two, 2007 was like the, the great year. That was like for 
the well, no limit cash go games. Go back in the 1990s. I only went for the you know in those days you right. just went for the cash games. You didn't go for the people. The, yeah. You know, higher limit players didn't play the tournaments except maybe the main event. Jason yeah. calls. Seven. Don't. But yeah, that's that was the convention. Well, cash if you had a time bubble machine, you could go back and just play oh boy. And have like 30 right. Yeah, I never played. <laughs> this could get expensive for Movation if uh, Mercer decides to step on the gas pedal here, hitting two pair on the turn. And there were people we kind of laughed at. You know, good players didn't play tournaments, and now those people have like street cred of being good players because they won tournaments. First year just calls. Hmm. Just a call. Beautiful. Three spades on board now. Yeah. Uh, are, are they games generally not civil? No, we had a game where it was Movazian still batting. Too much testosterone. Still him up just, like, at each other Good call. And then there was some the other speed of Jason's call well. lets Julian know he's beat. Hmm. Oh, I got destroyed. What do you guys think? Two calls from Jason after making two pair on the turn. Would you have raised in a turn? Do you feel as though you can raise in the river? Are you going to get value from anything there? Uh, can Movasian call there with the weak ace? It's, it's a very interesting situation. I personally might have check raised the turn just to see if I can get some more value there. Uh, but Jason, of course, still made a fair bit of money. And I think that Movasian range closed a lot of big aces. And maybe you're able to make some good money off of that. All right, what do we got going on here in the chat? Let me get caught up here on everything. We are live on both Facebook and YouTube. Uh, Christine is saying, need more women poker players on high stakes. Yes, I I love to see that. I love to see more women. Vanessa Selps was on the episode that we were watching here on this show before. And Vanessa has always been one of my favorite players. She always comes in there swinging, just like raising and check raising and doing all sorts of crazy stuff that makes her a lot of fun to watch and would love to have her her or someone else uh, represent the the female community because that would be great um carlos is asking what's the minimum buy-in well in this game the minimum buy-in was 200k so everybody's sitting down with at least two hundred thousand dollars on high stakes poker season seven um josh allman saying bring on tilly jennifer tilly is is a very very good player and she is also great action and i think tilly is one of my favorite characters to watch play um, so th that would obviously be awesome to have her play on high stakes poker. Um, what else we got up, got going on here? People suggesting that I should do this with Joe Ingram. Definitely. I've already texted Joey to come do this with me. And when he's ready and able and willing, we're definitely going to do this show with Joey Ingram. Painful when you put a straddle on it, I have nothing to play with. <laughs> it's like, it has to see it's so bottom of the barrel. Oh my god, I can't believe it. You gotta ask for a deal, say so yeah, I'll play it for only like 2,000. Can we do that? <laughs> Julian checks his ace king, huh? Piqued your interest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we did it, we cut side deals. I think with one person to plot. And Duomo yeah, bets his fives. Yeah, yeah. Heads up, you definitely can. Julian calls. Is everybody else going to straddle? Who, who's the straddler? Here? No? Everybody straddles. I'll definitely. Yeah. Just what Julian wanted to Thanks. see. Duomo so far one of the more quiet players at the table. And now, of course, he's going to probably get silenced even more. His uh, pair of fives no longer any good against the ace king of Movation, who. Oh, I take it back. I no, take it back. Uh, That's enough. I don't mind if we do, you know, around. around no, that is 10,000. I think maybe the game's a little too small. We should probably agree to just making it 8, 16, 24. <laughs> I'll do 8, 16, 24, 48, but nothing less. Nothing less. <laughs> <laughs> this is nothing less. Yeah, I'm not thinking maybe right. Duomo probably, probably has enough, Julian right? on an ace. You need surgery and stuff. Though. You couldn't fold. Right. Why would you have to fold? Race coming. Well, you might want that Why would arm. you want eight <laughs> arms, though? You'd have to. Yeah, it's probably safer to race. just put an arm in a wagon, though. Raises to 32,300. <laughs> <laughs> Hard hand for Julian to guess. I'll call. A five. You got a five? No. Good. Good hand. There it is. 22 what? Yeah, 22,300. Okay. Duhamel gets some profits there from his trip fives. Some uh, Movasian information coming in here through the YouTube chat. Uh, apparently, he's a uh, finance guy, so shout out to him for beating the system. 
Carlos is saying any Omaha games in the future. I'm sure we'll I'm sure we'll have Omaha games for sure. Um, poker after dark perhaps, or maybe on high stakes poker. Who knows? We'll see how things play out. But uh, we love the game of Omaha, and it's always good to have a variation of games between No Limit Hold'em and, and Pot Limit Omaha. Uh, Tom Eggert is saying, uh, are there backup players if someone busts and leaves? Yes, there are backup players. I believe back in these tapings of High Stakes Poker, there were three backup players per day. And in many cases, they were all used. Um, guys like Lex Felthaus, who played on Season 6, he was one of those backup players that all of a sudden got a seat when one of the players busted. Um, I believe it was Dario Minieri who busted on Season 6, and then Lex took his seat. Um, Lex Felthaus, by the way, making an appearance on this show pretty soon. Um, he's one of my friends that I go way back with, so it's going to be fun to um, watch some old high-stakes poker that features him here on the show. Uh, by the way, if you like the show, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It really means a lot, and it's really helpful for me to uh, get this discovered by many more poker fans as we are getting ready for Season 8 of High-Stakes Poker, which is uh, coming very soon. A size still the best. Who's the next straddle? He's the next straddle. Right? It's not big for me. I'm only playing for. No, if I knew the lineup, I probably would have. Julian goes for the steal. But I'm very nice to my friends. Yeah. Mission accomplished. All right. Movation getting really oh, active here on this episode. I can't even remember watching this episode, to be honest. It's good to sort of relive it all again. And uh, there is just so many ep epic moments across all seven seasons of this show that it's hard to, you know, put them all together. Uh, Brian Patek says, Tony G needs to be on high stakes. I agree. I'd love to have Tony G on high stakes poker. That would be amazing. Tony G, always loud, always talkative, always sending people on their bike. Uh, Josh Allman saying Helmuth versus Matasau. Yes, definitely. Love to have um, have a clash between Matasau and Helmuth. Uh, Mike Chan saying Jason might be a bit gun shy as his first appearance on High Stakes Poker, Ivy took his soul. Yes, that definitely happened. Ivy definitely stole the soul of Jason Mercer because um, I can't even recall the exact hand that it happened on, but Jason went for it and that did not go well. But not playing like one. Was it nines against a seven? I can't. I, I'm trying to recall what it was. Baxter with queen four. Huh. Call. Silent Mike doing the play. I was gonna be there. I was like, Silent Mike can do that to him. To play the 10k event. He really has been working on his double straddle game. How about your triple? Not a good flop for the double straddler. I hope Mike does something crazy here. That'd be oh. so, so much fun to watch. Extra still wow. How to play qu Queen 4, guys. Pay attention. Mike Baxter is showing us all how to do it. Bob had to have been worried about an ace or a flush draw. And now both options are in play. Check. I really think Mike Baxter has a chance to win this hand. Baxter is fully aware of that. That is 20 bucks. Goes wow. for the steal. Bet's 20,000. I love this hand. Tough for Bob to call. Yeah, that's why I was mad that they lost my lady. Mike Baxter. Show the cards, he please. Ain't no recreational yeah, player. When you fold it, that's why your bottom card. Just let you know. If okay. You, if you fold high. Oh, I don't really care. Okay. Well, you may as well share it with the whole table. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Huh, wow. Huge bluff from Mike Baxter, guys. That was incredible. I love it. Um, Brian Pulver asking, what are the stakes and is it a round of double straddling for the whole game or what? Um, Brian, this was Season 7 of High Stakes Poker and basically back then, whatever you wanted to do sort of played. And I think in this case, they are doing a single straddle. Um, I think the blinds were 400, 800, so the straddle will be the 1600. Um, 
this sort of changes every orbit. If, if people aren't eager to straddle, then sometimes there's more money in the middle than other times. And as you can see right now, Baxter is straddling to 1600 and every now and then you'll see a double straddle to, um, to make the game even bigger than it already is. I mean, whatever. That was the decision they made. This is Gerardo is saying, please put cash on the table in season eight. Yes, cash on the table. I would love to see that. Obviously, we have to play by the rules. I'm not sure what the rules are. I'm not in charge. But if we can bring cash on the table, we will definitely put cash on the table because that gave this so much extra flair uh, back in the day when high stakes poker was being filmed. And 800 rays, right? No, it no, straddles, straddles like an five, extra blind. Yeah, straddles considered a blind. I did it wrong anyway. That was, that was right. technically incorrect. Yeah, if it, if, if it was a blind raise, if it wasn't a live double straddle, you know, then you'd, you could be able to... Well, Gareth, play. smooth calls him again. Whoa, Phil comes Good. out swinging with a six. And he's got the table's attention. What is that? Pulling in the 32 real quick. Thirteen five more. Huh. Let's see where this I goes. I wonder if Bob is going to get outplayed twice in a row. I'm bleeding these chips away. Wow. Huh. Yep. Good move by Phil. You say, what am I doing? No, I said, oh boy. Aralibus is getting pushed around there by Mike Baxter and Phil Locke. Kind of surprised to see that, actually. Uh, Josh Elman saying, your bike looks lonely in the back. Well, trust me, it's not lonely. I'm riding almost every day. Riding four to five times a week, trying to get fit here during this quarantine. Um, Andy B is saying, any chance of themes like After Dark? I'm not sure what you mean exactly, but we are doing themed shows on Poker After Dark when it returns. And, you know, we'll have a variety of different lineups and people that are friendly with each other, like Hell Meets Home Game and things along those lines. So, obviously... Um, there's a lot more room for that kind of theme action on Poker After Dark because we do it so much more often than High Stakes Poker. Um, only fans are saying, oh no, where's Johnny Chan? Well, we switched lineups halfway through this broadcast and we got a whole new cast of characters here on the show. And uh, sadly, it does not include Johnny Chan. Um, but we do have some new faces here that love to gamble. Bill Berg is included, of course, who never backs down from a big race. Disgusting things for like 13 hours straight, like just really rude, mean things. Everyone, and I said one thing to him. It wasn't even like 10% as mean as what he said. And he's like, World champion gives seven deuce a like shot. And everyone at the table's like, yeah, why would you say that? Why would you do that? <laughs> It was just like, okay, that's how it works. Uh, Josh saying, didn't Phil date Gentile? Yes, they are still dating. Phil Lockett and Gentile are still dating. Uh, they are probably one of the coolest couples in poker very supportive of each other and very fun to watch the table both. So it would be funny to have them both at the table and see if they can uh, maybe bluff each other or something. Got shot. There's three uh, recreational players, $7,200 pot. I got a yeah, massage that was, uh, appointment at 415. I, that was, I know, 3600. Their, uh, you may have, tipping uh, point. That was it. Actually, might have been one of those truth and Don't even throw it in. On this one, I would need I hit a nerve for sure. Runner? Run I have a pair. To, to, to get the nuts boss. Pair in a straight draw. 10-9. <laughs> My plan worked perfectly. Bob Habib saying, watching your show all the way from Lebanon. Big fan of your show, man. Thank you so much, Bob. Appreciate you watching all the way from Lebanon. Um, wow, never been, but I'd love to go. Love to go to Lebanon. Heard great things about Beirut. So would love to visit the uh, lovely country of Lebanon when I get a chance. Now I'm craving falafel all of a sudden. Is that weird? I love, I love some uh, Middle Eastern cuisine. Jabron is saying Sammy Farah needs to make an appearance with Tony G. If Sammy Farah and Tony G are on the same table, I'm not sure if any other player would get a word in. That would be a sight to behold. Are you in or out of position, and is your opponent aggressive or careful? Or the, you know, like, random, the world champion random person, random average person. Then you should be random. And random, I would bet. You would bet? A set. Oh, yeah. Random you would have like over bet the pot five check. four times <laughs> to make sure they didn't draw it on you. Lavazian well, says <laughs> I'm game. I've open, done 50k pre-flop, whatever. If, but I have aces, you know, and protect the hand. Just me and the world champion. No, we're true actually. Oh, you and the 
Baxter flops a set of fours, and Duhamel has the nut flush drop. This could get big. Did you call? I said you just called before. I think it's too broad of a question. Then just do something different every time, then you can't really go wrong. That is 11 You'll be half, you'll be right half the time, roughly, if you if you choose right. These people are always worried about how to play say? sets. Uh, yeah, exactly. Players are talking better hands than yeah. I do about how to play I sets. Got. They don't know Baxter has a set. I don't have much of a game plan for it. <laughs> no. It doesn't happen enough. It's wow. tough to make a set. I'm too busy hoping to get a set to worry that much about what I'm going to do once I get one. Duomo makes the flush. Wow. But I'm not I'm not folding once I get it. I hope Duomo bets There's really big here. Slow There's down, Mike. something to one set. Well, once you have a pair, you know, it's eight to one. But I mean, yeah, right. I mean, yeah, getting a pair of the parlay of the pair. A little bit of Hollywooding by the world champion. Airy, 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 hundred hand cheese. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hand where I have to see if he folds. If he gets to see the flop. Yeah. 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 Seventeen thousand yeah. six. We're gonna find out soon. In three D. Three D. Soon. I don't think he had Ace King. Well, that's a stupid bet because he had the option. I would, I would say not. Baxter calls. Right. Couldn't really win that bet. Oh uh, yeah, well, interesting if the board pairs. Had the chance to win. I think. Like twenty bucks. All right, let's see if Baxter can get away from this set here. Check again. Tell me. Like tell me. And this time, a quick $33,500 bet. $33,500? Hmm. Not sure if I can ever get away from a set here. I call. Flush. Must be nice. Must be nice making flushes when your opponent has a set. That's really hard to get away from. I don't think I've ever folded a set in my life, by the way. So, you know, probably the wrong person to ask. Uh, people are asking, how is Sammy Farah doing nowadays? I have no idea. I haven't heard or seen Sammy in a very long time. Um, hopefully he's doing well. Hopefully we get to see him again. Uh, Bob, Bob Habib um, saying that they have got one of the best cuisines ever in Lebanon. I believe it, man. I love I love Lebanese food. Uh, Patton270 is saying, I'd say Bryce Jockey took the worst bad beat ever on television. Yes, I agree. If you Google worst bad beat ever, that should come up. The Bryce Jockey hand against Josh Arie at the World Series of Poker last year in a deuce seven triple draw, um, making, or Arie making the perfect hand um, after three streets of betting uh, when uh, I believe Yaki had the third best possible hand. Just insane. Just absolutely crazy. If you play Deuce of Seven Triple Draw, you know how crazy that is. So what would you bet? Like 90% of the pot? On the, on the, no, 80, 80. He, couldn't have, he couldn't have done anything on the flop to get there. Yeah. No, no, no. He could have went all in. He's not going out. Check no. shows. That'd be the only way to check. All right. So, guys, I already told you guys, High Stakes Poker is coming back for Season 8. I want some more new names. What are some names that have never played on High Stakes Poker before that you guys want to see on the show? I know that we've already mentioned Sigmund. We've already mentioned people that have played on the show before, you know, like Tom Dwan, for instance. But what are some new names? I'm just going to help you guys a little bit here. Brent Kenny, I think, will be a great candidate to be on High Stakes Poker. But who else? Who else from the new age of players would you like to see the most on High Stakes Poker? In the future, a lot of people. My dog, my dog was like in isolation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Perkins starts yeah, thinking again. Did you have the camera feed though on your dog? Did you get to watch him? Or so, uh, one place had that, but it wasn't. We just talking and about makes a good bet. Oh. They don't have like the single feed for every dog or whatever. All right. Oh. Oh. Is it? And here comes wounded Mike. Make it 15. Wow. Mike Baxter just coming out swinging. And there oh, goes man. Pinson yeah. Perkins. Huh. I didn't know if you were steamed or, or, or he you was steamed and had to be both. Let's see what's happening here. Brian saying Isildur. Yes, Isildur is at the top of my list of a player who has never played before. Um, Lee is saying East London crew in the house. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Love London. Uh, Gibran is saying Fader Holtz. I'd love to have Fader Holtz on the show. Uh, more of a tournament player, but I'm pretty sure he could hold his own in the cash games. Uh, Derek is saying Justin Bonomo. Um, would love that as well. Lee is asking, where is this being played? As you can see in the background right now, 
That was the Bellagio Fountains. So this was taped at the Bellagio Fountains back in 2011. We are watching some throwback action from High Stakes Poker Season 7. Um, Max Palace saying Pascal Lefrancois. Well, he's been doing really, really good in online tournaments. So he probably has the bankroll. Um, Linus Love is being suggested by Irvin. Um, like that as well. Um, Mike Chan is saying Anthony Alberto. Well, he's got some gamble in him. So that would be uh, some awesome action. I think Max Pell is from Quebec because he's now saying a Phil Dotay, um take chip, legendary online player from back in the days, had some great results live as well. Uh, Sean Deeb is being mentioned, never has played before. I'm not sure if Armenian Mike's allowed in. Um, we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, Chow is saying Wilka Souf. We have a mention for OTB Red Baron. Chidwick, Linus Love, Charlie Carroll, Nick Shulman, all great names. Wow, you guys, I'm taking notes. I'm, I'm writing all this down. I'm going to pass this off to Brent and see what he says. Um, Ozzy Matt, Sauce, uh, Reiner Kempe, Toby Maguire. That would, that would be really funny if we had some some uh, famous celebrities in the game. Uh, Paul Fua, yes. Paul Fua would be awesome to have in the game. Infinite bankroll. We'd love to splash around. Uh, Garrett Adelstein is being suggested. Um, Lonnie O Lonnie O is suggesting that Lonnie O should play uh, that is sort of the same way as Josh Allman is saying that Josh Allman should play well if you guys have the bankroll to play in a game like this you gotta hit me up at Remco Rinkema on Twitter you can find me there slide into those DMs if you want to play if you have the bankroll and otherwise you can follow, follow me on Twitter just to um, give me a shout if you want to <laughs> you know ask a question or if you want to tour the studio actually let me know as well when, once that's possible again I'll do some tours of the PokerGo studio if that's open again in the future. Or I should say when it opens again in the future because it will be opening again, of course. Um, yeah, Max is from Montreal. I knew it, Max. I could tell. Um, Jay uh, Karras is saying Matt Damon. That would be... Wouldn't that be something? That'd be hilarious. 4,500 more? Or like 61. 61. 61. Yeah, Lonnie. We'd, we'd all love a bankroll. Who wouldn't love a bankroll to play with? I'll keep you company. Uh oh. Company. Right. Here we go. Let's, let's put just the kind of player that's happy to see a flop and win the pot right there. Let's put a queen out there just to get some action. I hate when they come to crack it. Floppy sees they both hit queen. There is a queen, but also an ace, which is kind of a shame. Eleven thousand six hundred. Huh. The verbal announcement. What does that mean? Is that always middle pair? Where do you live now? Montreal. Montreal, yeah. Julian gives him credit for an ace. Huh, he gives up. Perkins still looks confused. But he must have played really good because he's a chip It's player. over, Bill. You win the pot. People don't always call you. Huh, that was loud. Uh, yeah, so you guys, please make sure to follow me on Twitter at Remco Rinkema if you want any qu any if you have any questions or suggestions or if you want to see certain players on this show or if you want me to watch certain episodes of High Stakes Poker or Poker After Dark, you got to let me know because I would love to um, make sure to please the crowd because we do this show twice a week, Tuesday at 10 a.m. on the West Coast, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, or I want to say that is then 7 p.m. on the uh, Central European Time Zone and wherever that is in Australia, probably middle of the night. But then on Thursday, we do the night show, 5 p.m. Uh, on, the, on the West Coast, 8 p.m. on the East Coast, and in the middle of the night, in Europe, and clearly, because of all the Australian viewers today, nice and early in the morning on the Australian East Coast. So, you guys, I really appreciate you all with me here today. we got a few hands left here on the show. Let's make the most of it. Um, if you have any more questions, please do send them in right now. And don't forget to like this video. If you are on YouTube or on Facebook, make sure to like this video because that helps me a lot. we got a few more hands of action here. Maybe some big pots coming up. So, um, let's dive in. And Mercier is wondering what he should do with his open-ended straight draw. Is it on me? No. Oh, sorry. He bets it. Is it on me? Grab a stack of chips. And... Gone. I realize I had um, the wrong color. Silent Mike. Baxter calls. He's in the sauce like a ninja. Silent Mike. Got my trips or sad busted already, so 
No. Hey, we don't like to hear whiners, Mike. So let's just. Well, <laughs> you should sit on the other side of the table. <laughs> Doable calls, and if like a spade comes, we're going to see a huge pot. Wow, put a spade out there for the action. He can't complain about being in a relationship. Deuce like of heart doesn't, doesn't change anything. Right? That's the excitement. Talk about how miserable you are, how unhappy you are. If you don't have that, you might as well get divorced. Yeah, that's why I fell off the cliff, because I like to complain about physical pain from time to time. Not all the time. Just, just like a little bit. It makes you feel like you're important. Yeah, 20 minutes every other day or something. I'll check to the river. You feel pain. Yeah. And there it is. Hmm, the spade with the board pair. But it pairs yeah, the board that yeah. could slow things down. This is a very interesting river card, I'll say. How about a roll in a movie? 22. Kid, you already promised that. You can't be doing one of these trade or pull back, commit, I'm done, gonna, uh, the offers that like, you to like 22,000. Speaking, speaking line, I already expected that. I got <laughs> not, not think Canada. And do a mail just call. Huh. If you give me like a uh, a thing where there's. Yeah, that's good. Oh, oh, awesome. Flush over flush there for Baxter to get his money back. Shout out to him. Mohammed is saying, will it still be on GSN? Well, it'll definitely be on Poker Go. And then maybe on TV somewhere else. That is all still being worked on. But we are, first and foremost, worried about the lineup and working on which players would be in there. Um, we are at the end of this episode. Next time on High Stakes Poker. Well, next time on this show, I will have a very special guest. I'm uh, very hopeful that it's going to be one of those guys that you guys all love to watch. So please tune in again next week on Tuesday, 10 a.m. on the West Coast, 1 p.m. on the East Coast. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't miss out on the next episode of Run It Back because the next time we will be watching actually these episodes it's phil Locke, it's bill perkins we got barry greenston in the mix we got lots of big action coming up here on run it back with remco so once more thank you guys all so much for watching thanks for all the questions i really really appreciate it but for now this is the end of the show and we'll catch you guys next week